Welcome to lesson two, and I'm delighted that you made it through lesson one. This particular lesson is entitled, Learn How to Create a Basic Presentation in PowerPoint. This particular course has a total of seven lessons, and in this second lesson, you're going to learn how to create a PowerPoint presentation from beginning to end. Before we actually jump in, I just want to remind you what we covered in the first lesson are those six words that help you introduce this technology in a kind of context that helps your students become critical thinkers. Find what inspires them. Organize a storyline. Help them relate to their audience and put something in their PowerPoint that helps grab the audience's attention. Help them to evoke a call to action and then help them to practice ahead of time before they present. We will cover one word in each of the following lessons. So on lesson two, we'll cover this word find. Find what inspires them. Of course, the lesson title is on creating a basic presentation. But you'll see a running theme as we teach this, that we're helping them find what inspires them. And so let's jump right into the lesson plan. This is the lesson plan for lesson two. And you'll notice all my lesson plans have an objective and a set of steps. You paid for this course, and so you get all of these lesson plans. So at the end of this course, remember to go ahead and email me, and I will send you a little booklet or packet with all of the lesson plans for your own use with your own students. The objective is learn how to create a basic PowerPoint presentation. Step one, give motivation to your students on why they should learn PowerPoint. Step two, start by giving your students a topic that helps them consider what inspires them. And step three, give your students some basic steps to create a simple presentation. Now, I'd like to spend one slide on each of these three steps. So step one, start out the class by giving them some motivation. In fact, and you may want to do this in a way that you're comfortable with, depending on your situation, whether you're in a computer lab or in your classroom. But if it were me, I would start out the discussion with everyone having their computer off. And then I would introduce the topic of PowerPoint this way. You know, I've been observing some of you over these past few days, and there's one thing very interesting to me, and that is I've noticed some of you have a hard time saying what is important to you. You just have a hard time expressing what is really important to you. And I don't know if that's because throughout your life, your ideas have been called dumb or your ideas have been sidelined or backburnered. I don't know, but we're going to change all of that in this classroom by helping you give voice to what's important to you in an atmosphere of trust. And my theme for this particular class is no idea is a dumb idea. So you as a professional teacher, you start out something like that. So when they think about PowerPoint, they don't think of it as just a technology. They think of it as a means to express ideas that are important to them. And that gets them on the pathway of becoming a critical thinker. Step two, start by giving your students a topic rather than merely teaching the technology. So I'm going to give you a topic right now. This is the topic. When you are having one of those tough days in the classroom, what motivates you to keep going? Now, when you're in front of your students, you'll give them a topic. There's so many things to be inspired about. Choose a topic. If you're a math teacher, you might say, in this particular case, we're going to do a scenario where you're in a dungeon, and you need to be able to get out of that dungeon by understanding the dimensions of the dungeon, and by having at least 10 minutes to do it, but no more than 20, because the jailer is on his way. Create, create some scenario. Or you're a PE teacher. You know, I, I've had PE teachers take my class, and they're like, where do I use this software in PE? Well, you'd be surprised. You can help your students create an athletic plan. You can have them study an inspiring soccer player and present that. There are all kinds of things you can do. I've had nurses in unified school districts take these classes. 
you can provide a presentation of the most critical ways that a child should practice with washing their hands, covering their mouth, when they start the first day of school. There's all kinds of things you can do to give ideas to your students. Pick a topic. Step three, follow the steps below to create a PowerPoint presentation. Basically, I'm just going to start you out with just five points. And the reason I want you to memorize these five points is because after you take this course, two things are going to happen to you and to your students. Number one, you're going to forget about almost everything that I talked to you about with regard to PowerPoint. You're just going to forget about it. Because there's so many technologies out there, you're going to be taking several other technology classes, I'm sure, in the course of your life. And there's no way, even I, and I grew up with technology, even I can remember everything. So number one is you're going to forget. Number two is the technology is going to change on you. Microsoft is going to come out with a new version of PowerPoint. Or your school district is going to say, you know what, we're going to use PowerPoint this year. Next year we're going to use Google presentation software. Well, it's interesting. If you know these five points and you just have these in your memory, you'll be able to at least have the basics with you all the time and you'll be able to switch software and teach new software no matter what kind of presentation software it is because presentation software needs these five things the quick access toolbar the tabs the ribbon the slide pane and the active slide so let's go ahead and we'll do a little pause here and let's get right into PowerPoint what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the icon here and I'm gonna go ahead and click PowerPoint if you're having a hard time accessing PowerPoint at the very beginning just go ahead and send me an email if you're on Windows XP, Windows 7, you click on the Start button, then click on the Search. If you're on Mac, you go ahead and go to the Spotlight Search. You can type in PowerPoint. It should bring up PowerPoint. If you're on Windows 8, like I'm on Windows 8, you can go ahead and go to the top right home page search, type in PowerPoint, and the PowerPoint icon comes up. Or sometimes, if you're on a Mac, you'll have the PowerPoint icon right there at the bottom. But if you're having trouble, pause this YouTube video right now. Just, just pause it and send me an email okay go ahead and click blank presentation I would really encourage you at the very beginning of helping your students with PowerPoint don't let them get into all the colors the animation the drawings the being able to embed music and videos we'll get to that but right now keep them focus on that desire within them to express what inspires them and in order to do that just use black and white so I clicked on the blank slide at the top and yes we covered this in the little trailer in the last presentation but I want to go a little slower at the top here you have what's called the quick access toolbar I know you're gonna feel a little bit dumb doing this but repeat after me you just repeat after me quick access toolbar now you may say why do I need to learn the ter terminology? Well, you know what? Because you're going to stand in front of your students, and after teaching them for about 30 minutes, someone's going to raise their hand and say, can you explain to me what that little red thing is on the top left thingy? And a lot of students in your class are going to look to you for the answer, but they don't know what the thingy is this little boy's talking about. At that point, you need to turn to your student and say, I don't know what a thingy is. Do you mean the top left where the icons are? Student will go, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Then you say, and what did we discuss? What is that called? Oh, yeah, it's the quick access toolbar. Very good. Okay, so as soon as you ask the student to re-ask their question. Okay, student, ask your question again. Okay, what's the red thing on the quick access toolbar? right away the entire class knows where to direct their eye so you have to help the students get the five points of this vocabulary they may not get the vocabulary of the other buttons that's okay but they should be able to say in their sleep quick access toolbar tabs ribbon slide pane and the active slide if they can just get that and they're talking to one another using these phraseologies it will make your life easier believe me so the quick access toolbar it really has the buttons that you have quick access to 
And this is really cool. I'll show you this really uh, quickly. If you click on the center of the active slide, you'll notice these ribbon items light up. And some of these are items that you may use very commonly, but they're embedded underneath the tabs in particular ribbons. And you might want to be able to help your students get to them faster. So what you do is consider the most common buttons you use, roll your mouse over it, right click, and then click Add to Quick Access Toolbar. And then you'll notice it pops up to the top. That way, if your class mainly uses 10 buttons, you don't have to waste a lot of time going into the ribbons and trying to help them find it. You can just say, all the common buttons we're going to use are all in the Quick Access Toolbar. And so I'll be referring to them as button 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but they'll all be in the Quick Access Toolbar. So you can do things like that. Then, of course, there's the tabs, there's the ribbons, there's the slide pane. Listen to my vocabulary. Can you say slide pane? Slide pane. And then there's the active slide. Can you say active slide, active slide? I know you're, you're thinking to yourself, hey, listen, I'm a professional. I'm, I'm not a high schooler. I get it. I, I totally get it. But again, I'm like you. You're like me. And neither of us want to take a slide presentation software class again in our life probably because we just don't have the time. So now's the time to get these five things embedded into your brain. So then after that, you can teach any slide presentation software. In fact, really quick, just to drive this point home, let me go to Google. You know, this is Google presentation software. At the top, there's a quick access bar. There are tabs. You'll notice that there's not a ribbon really, but there, there is menus. There's the active slide, sorry, there's the slide pane, and then there's the active slide. So if you get these five points, you can switch from one software to another and basically still teach your students how to become critical thinkers and not get hung up on the details of the manufacturer's placement of buttons. So anyway, it's important that you go ahead and you get the details of this. Okay, so what keeps me going? I'm typing. Then there's a section, type from Donnie. You'll notice the title slide, it has an area where the letters are bigger and an area where the letters are smaller. You can have different templates, but the blank template begins this way. Then to add a new slide, watch my mouse. As I go up, I can click on new slide right here. Or because I added this to the quick access toolbar, I can click here and it adds a second slide. Then once again, you have a title. What keeps me going? And then you can put what keeps you going. When I was a young, struggling student trying to find my place in the world, I was so thankful that no one ever gave up on me. So when I have one of those hard days in the classroom, I think to myself, if I can give hope to even one student today, it is all worth it. That is what keeps me going. There we have a presentation. Then if you want this presentation to play and display on your computer, you can click on this little presentation area right here where it says presentation. That little button is also on the bottom. It looks like a little kind of overhead projector uh, presentation software. Um, and then you go ahead and you click on that, and it goes full screen. Of course, you can click on your up arrow to go to the first slide, and then I'm clicking on my down arrow to go to the next slide. So there you have it, beginning to end, 